It's 6 p.m. here in Korea. Thank you for joining us at this hour. I'm Daniel Che. Let's begin with the headlines. Investigations continue after a reservist training. Reservists went on a shooting rampage at a training camp yesterday. Defense Ministry and Army officials were in the hot seat at the National Assembly. After North Korea conducted military exercises near the NLL late Wednesday night, Seoul's Unification Ministry responded by emphasizing one simple fact. Provocative acts only add to political instability on the peninsula. Will the Korean economy rebound in the second half of the year? The OECD expressed confidence while the IMF had reservations. Korea's finance minister points to possible growth at a moderate pace. The Korean army says Wednesday's shooting incident by a reservist surnamed Che was premeditated and that he had alluded to the shootings in text messages he sent to a friend. For more, we now connect to our Nayeon Kyung standing by on the line. Hyung Kyung, could you give us the latest on the investigations? Sure, Daniel. Army officials revealed the preliminary investigation results at the Defense Ministry this afternoon. They said Che seems to have planned the shooting in advance, saying he had sent around 10 text messages to a friend leading up to the shooting. One of the messages said on on May 12th, I'll be a dead person. Goodbye. Now, May 12th is the day the mandatory three-day training for reservists began. The incident happened on May 13th. Official Sage had told a drill instructor that he wanted to use the far left shooting lane. In hindsight, it's unfortunate that he was allowed to do so because this put him farther away from the instructors and gave him a better uh, position to shoot reservists in lane number two and on. Now, this is also one of the reasons why the Army believes he had carefully planned the shooting. So, Young Young, have the officials found out what had caused him to turn the rifle on his fellow reservists? Well, the Army says uh, it's uh, still investigating the exact motive, but it did say Che had sought psychiatric help on six separate occasions before and after his time in the Army. Now, they added he was under a lot of stress beginning earlier this year as he was trying to earn a welding certificate but failed. During his time in the Army, he was classified as a soldier in need of special care as he had shown suicidal behaviors. A note found in in Che's pocket after he committed suicide included sentences like, I don't know why I'm living. I deeply regret missing the opportunity to kill everyone, including myself, in the Army. Daniel? Clearly, he needed some help. Uh, Young Young, could you backtrack a little bit and tell us what happened yesterday for those who haven't been following this particular news? Sure. The shooting uh, happened at around 10.30 a.m. on Wednesday at a shooting range in southern Seoul. Two reserve soldiers, including the assailant Che, died right away, and two others were injured. Later yesterday evening, though, one of the injured died, raising the number of deaths to three. Today, Army officials said the whole thing happened in a span of 10 seconds. Che fired towards the target board once, then suddenly got up and aimed at a reservist waiting behind him and then turned the rifle on other reservists. Now, there were apparently a total of nine instructors, none of whom were able to stop Che. The military is expected to face tough questioning, especially in regards to safety rules that weren't enforced in the training session. Back to you, Daniel. Thank you for that. That was our Nayeon reporting on their preliminary investigation results into the tragic reservist training camp shooting. Moving on to a, a related story. Prior to the Army's announcement of its investigation into results on Thursday afternoon, lawmakers and defense ministry officials held talks on the incident at the National Assembly. For details, we turn to our Jim Young-gil. Lawmakers lashed out at defense ministry and army officials questioning why a reservist with a record of mental health issues was allowed to attend the training. Defense ministry officials reported that the 23-year-old gunman, Che, had been sent from one unit to another as he failed to adapt to his military life during mandatory service. The defense ministry will conduct a thorough probe into the accident to resolve any suspicions. We promise to prevent tragic recurrences in the future. We express condolences to the victims and their bereaved families and to those who are hurt. Defense Committee members also asked why nine active duty soldiers, including three captains, at the site during the practice shooting didn't take action to prevent casualties. They were positioned to ensure the safety of 20 firing lines during the drill. Lawmakers said they doubted whether the supervisors took proper security procedures and reprimanded the military's lax management of training and weapons. The Army promised to put safety first. 
The Defense Ministry has issued guidelines to strengthen the safety of shooting practices and will thoroughly assess the accident to devise measures to overhaul the reserve forces training system. All Korean men must complete nearly two years of mandatory military service and they go on to the reserve forces, where they attend regular training to maintain skills and readiness. Kim young Arirang News. Moving on to the latest on the graft scandal that rocked the nation, former Prime Minister Lee Wan Gu appeared before prosecutors on Thursday for questioning over alleged bribery. Addressing a crowd of reporters, he apologized for causing public concern and said nothing in the world beats the truth. When asked about the accusation, he declined to answer. He is suspected of accepting roughly 27,000 U.S. dollars from late businessman Song Wan Jung back in 2013 during his campaign for a parliamentary seat. The former prime minister is the second official on Song's bribery list to face questioning following Governor Hong Jun Pyo of Gyeongsangnam-do province. Now, despite the ongoing political instability in North Korea, uh, the reclusive regime forged ahead with military drills near the maritime border with the South on Wednesday. Our Han Dahan has more on Seoul's response. Seoul's Unification Ministry says North Korea should realize that its repeated provocations do not at all help to improve inter-Korean ties. The remarks come after Pyongyang conducted military exercises near the northern limit line late Wednesday night, live firing some 130 artillery shells from warships, stressing that Pyongyang's provocations continue despite Seoul's efforts to thaw relations. The ministry urged the North to stop all threats and verbal attacks. However, officials emphasized that Seoul will stick to its Korean Peninsula trust process despite Pyongyang's hostility. First initiated by President Park Geun-hye, the trust process aims to achieve peaceful reunification with the North through dialogue and exchange. As for the escalating wage spat at the inter-Korean Kaesong Industrial Complex, the ministry said North Korea's unilateral decision to raise the minimum wage is illegal under the Kaesong Industrial Complex law established by the regime. Meanwhile, Unification Minister Hong Yong-pyo during an executive meeting Thursday ordered the National Intelligence Service to keep a close eye on the political situation in Pyongyang while maintaining stable inter-Korean relations. Han Dae-eun, Arirang News. The parliamentary subcommittee has verified North Korea's recent claim that it fired a ballistic missile from a submarine. On Thursday, a member of the Parliamentary Intelligence Committee said the committee had received enough evidence from the National Intelligence Service to prove that North Korea did in fact launch a missile from a submarine and not from a submerged barge as claimed by a U.S. expert. The expert said that North Korea may have photoshopped its test photo to exaggerate the progress of its missile development program. Earlier today, President Park met with a group of North Koreans who have settled in South Korea or overseas and promised to continue to prepare the two Koreas for unification. Reflecting on the different paths the two Koreas have taken since they were divided 70 years ago, President Park talked about her unification preparatory committee and Seoul's attempts to increase civilian exchanges with North Korea. She also expressed regret about the North's latest missile threats, its resistance to international calls for, for an end to its human rights abuses, and its refusal to discuss resuming inter-Korean family reunions with South Korea. The president asked the group to help promote Seoul's unification initiatives and bridge the divide between the two Koreas. Celebrating 25 years of diplomatic ties, Korea and Bulgaria have agreed to hold their first high-level economic meeting in October to seek ways to increase bilateral trade and investment. Two-way trade volume was recorded just over 300 million U.S. dollars last year, and officials from both sides see a potential to further increase trade through the Korea EU FDA. President Park Geun-hye and visiting Bulgarian President Rosen Plene Liev also discussed diversifying their cooperation, agreeing to further look into having Korean firms participate in Bulgaria's large-scale infrastructure project. Seoul and Sofia, Bulgaria's capital, signed several deals such as wants to expand cooperation in, in defense, science and technology, and culture. Bulgaria also backed President Park's unification policy and peace initiatives in Northeast Asia. 
Analysts project economic growth by examining a number of indicators, but this year they seem to be getting and giving some mixed signals on the Korean economy. Our Song ji -sun reports. The Korean economy is on track for expansion with a brighter outlook for the latter half of this year, according to the OECD's latest composite leading indicator, or CLI index. A figure over 100 on that index means the economy is heading towards expansion. Korea climbed up to 102 in March, the highest in nearly four years. The U.S. and China are both under 100. On the other hand, the International Monetary Fund Korea's growth forecast for this year from 3.3 down to 3.1 percent. Those predictions have been dropping since October. The IMF also noted that last year's Hyoto Ferry disaster had an adverse effect on the economy and called on the Korean government to seek further stimulus measures. However, Finance Minister Choi kyung hwan said on Thursday that the Korean economy is on a recovery path, but the pace of growth is not enough to assure foreign investors. In its monthly economy report, the Finance Ministry said real indicators are improving across all sectors, both in production and consumption, but private think tanks say lagging exports are holding the economy back from true recovery. Song ji -sun, Arirang News. Koreans are racking up the debt as household loans surged in April. The Bank of Korea says Thursday that nearly 530 billion U.S. dollars in loans were taken out last month. That's up almost $7.8 billion from than the month before, the steepest pace of increase on month since the central bank began collecting data in 2008. The BOK attributed the steep rise to the low interest rate and increasing house transactions, largely driven by the spring moving season. In Seoul alone, some 14,000 apartment transactions were made, doubling the contract signed during the same month back in 2006. The Korean government and U.S. private equity firm Lone Star are heading to court in Washington and billions of dollars are at stake. Our Shin Se-min gives us the details. A 10-day hearing begins this week into a multi-billion dollar lawsuit brought by U.S. private equity firm Lone Star Funds against the Korean government. Lone Star is demanding 4.7 billion U.S. dollars in damages. The roots of the case go all the way back to 2003, when the Texas-based firm bought a stake in Korea Exchange Bank for $1.2 billion. Lone Star is demanding the damages for lost profits and tax disputes, claiming it was forced to sell its stake for a much lower price in 2012 to Hana Financial Group because the Korean government dragged its feet approving the deal. Lone Star is also demanding the Korean government reimburse it for taxes paid on the proceeds of the asset sale. It says that as its subsidiaries based in Belgium and Luxembourg handled the transaction, it should be exempt from taxes under investment treaties Seoul has with the EU member nations. The Korean government says those subsidiaries are merely paper companies and therefore should not be protected by the contract. The case is being closely watched as a verdict in favor of Lone Star could prompt foreign firms to launch similar suits. A Korean interagency team composed of around 10 officials is currently in Washington ahead of the first day of the hearing on Friday. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Moving on to a different topic now. While Korea-Japan relations have consistently deteriorated over historical disputes, business leaders from both countries are calling for stronger economic cooperation. Our Kwanzaa reports on progress made at their annual business meeting taking place in Seoul this Thursday. This year, the annual Korea-Japan Business Conference fell on the 50th anniversary of normalized diplomatic ties between the two countries. That may seem ironic considering the ongoing high-level impasse over historical tensions. However, business leaders interested in improving economic cooperation may be the best option for a breakthrough. Korea and Japan face many similar economic problems, such as the growing aging population and low labor participation of women compared to men. Despite those common challenges, their exports and imports have been going downhill and their 170 billion U.S. dollar currency swap ended earlier this year. Bilateral finance policies cannot succeed without trust and support from the political arena. That's why we have to find a way to make a breakthrough to improve cooperation. 
A joint statement adopted at Thursday's meeting might help. It includes plans to create new businesses together in third countries and cooperation on big sporting events like the Pyeongchang Winter and Tokyo Summer Olympics. The statement also focused on fast-tracking possible trade paths. FTA between or FTA or EPA between uh, Korea and Japan. Uh, that negotiation started, I think, almost 10 years ago, but uh, it was suspended a long time. And in the meantime, the FTA between China and Korea was agreed upon uh, in February. And now, therefore, the most important thing for us is to expedite and restart the negotiation FTA EPA between Japan and Korea. Kamezaki said he hopes negotiations between Korea and Japan will be swifter than the three-way talks, including China. Later this month, Korea and Japan expect to hold the first ministerial-level trade talks in two years, offering hope economic ties will improve in the next 50 years. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. We have come to the end of our newscast. We do have more coming up at 10 p.m. Korea time, so do join us then. For now, thank you for watching.